Welcome everybody, this is CSIS 3020, Web Programming and Design. <clears throat> I will be recording my classroom sessions every week, and I'll be posting these video lectures online. As most of you have figured out already, I'm not going to be using Blackboard. I'm going to be using Moodle. And this is where you're supposed to go. Anybody still has problems logging in? You still have problems? Okay. Catch me during the break. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but at this point, this is what we're going to be covering. Uh, week per week. I'm going to be sharing with you the video lectures. They're in AVI format. So you can pretty much use whatever player you want to use. But my recommendation is to use the C1. Yeah, I know. There are hackers. Video, <coughs> video LAN, LC Media Player, this one. The VLC Media Player. That's the one that I suggest. I mean, but you can you can use you know whatever you want. Also, this is the only place where you will find the syllabus. you are in the wrong classroom. That's weird. Really? Course Wizard, that's why I went to 1037. I'm like, what happened here? Oh, did I go to the wrong one? That's what happened then. Okay. You are right. 3020. There it is. Okay. Alright, so you can download the syllabus from there. I have also posted on Moodle a link to it. So this will take you to the course wizard. And I'm going to give you the five minute review. I expect you to read it all and send me an email if you haven't done so uh, already. Um, telling me that you read it and that you agreed to the terms. Okay? But my five minute review is this is my office. Okay? Parker 127. You can reach me almost every day. But. I have office hours, and my office hours are Tuesday 2 to 4, and Thursdays 5 to 8. Okay? If you, if that schedule doesn't work for you, then call me, and we'll arrange some other time. Okay? But, if you want immediate assistance, I'm almost constantly 24 hours under Instant Messenger the Moodle Instant Messenger. So if you guys post any message to it, and I'm online, like right now, Jonathan, Stefan, and Antonio, all these three guys are online. 
If they send me a message, I immediately get the pop-up. If I'm not connected or online, I'll get an email. And I'll try to reply to that email within 24 hours. Okay? But that's the best way. If you send me an email, I get 150 to 200 emails every day. You will get lost in the shuffle. Okay? So, please send me an IM. Okay. So back to the syllabus. This is the book. But you don't have to cop uh, you don't have to buy the paper copy if you don't want to. I am providing for you the electronic version of the book. Here it is. It's a PDF. Okay? But that's not the only book that we're going to be using. We're also going to be using this one, and this one, and this one. Not all of it, but a few chapters from it. And I will tell you what chapters are relevant as we progress in the semester. Okay? Okay. Late assignments will not be accepted, and I mean it. Oh, but it has five minutes before the due deadline. Please allow me to send a via email as an attachment. No. I'm sorry. Give yourself enough time. The stuff that you guys are going to be uploaded into Moodle can be anywhere between... 30 to 40 megs, okay? Depending on your network connection, it could take a little while. So don't leave it for the last minute. Try to upload it before the last minute. I do not give any quizzes or exams. Those of you who already know me, I don't believe in quizzes and exams, okay? Here, you code. You're going to be building a project, and you're going to be doing small homeworks that will help you get the skills that you're going to have to apply in the project. In here, you do. Okay? And if you read my comments on Moodle, you learn to ride a bike by getting on the bike, right? Same here. I focus on hands-on learning over old school lectures. From day one, you'll dig in and start coding. Okay? That's the way I learn, and I hope that that's the way you're going to be able to learn, too. This is the schedule. I'm going to try to stick to the schedule. Some, sometimes we might need uh, an extra week to cover something that maybe you guys are not so cool about and maybe sometimes we can just add uh, additional things okay I'm gonna try to stick to my schedule but this these are the 17 weeks and I'm counting the final as the 17th week you guys will turn in the final the last day of the finals okay And this is the arrangement of of the percentages. So roughly, you guys are going to have between four, five, or six homeworks assignments. That's 30% of the grade. Project milestone one, which as you see, it's around midterm. It's on midterm, actually. That's 20% of the grade. A few weeks later, there's Project Milestone 2. Okay? That's going to be 20% of the grade. And then the final project is 30% of the grade. So as you guys can see, it's just stuff that you have to do and deliver. Any questions? That's it.
Yes, they will all be on Moodle. If you go into Moodle, you will see week per week the lessons, what's due, the code, the code that I do in here in class right in front of you. I'm going to be able to zip it, upload it, and you guys can download it, unzip it in your local environment, and run with it. Okay? All right. What about the software? All the software will be open source, which means it's free, freely available for you guys. Some of this stuff I have made available for you to download, and other stuff you're going to have to find it on websites. Okay? And I'm going to go on the second half of tonight's lecture, I'm going to go through each one of the pieces of software that you guys are going to need. What is the objective of web programming and design? And as you can see, there's two parts to this. There's the web design part, and there's the web programming part. Okay? Some of you will find fun doing the design and stuff and will not find programming so much fun. And vice versa for some of you too. Okay? I grade the entire thing. Okay? So it's just as important to have a really good design as important to have a really good programming background when you create the website. So you guys are going to be building a database driven website. What does that mean? It means that you guys are going to have a whole bunch of data, business data, company data, whatever, that you're going to be able to display on your website. And you're going to ask from your users and your users will register on your website and you will have to authenticate that they are who they say they are, okay? And you're going to allow them to input data into that database. And you're going to be able to show that data to other users in the website, okay? So that's what it's called by database-driven website. Out of the 17 weeks, the first seven to eight weeks, you guys are going to concentrate on database design. Okay? The cool front end, the headers, the menus, the logos. Okay? Stuff that it should be eye candy for your users. And then the second part of the semester, you guys will concentrate on actually making it dynamic, database driven. So you're going to have to build the database, you're going to have to add the data to that database, and you're going to have to use that database design that you create, I'm, I'm sorry, that web design that you created the first eight weeks, and m show it dynamically with programming. The programming language will be PHP. Okay? The database uh, the website design will be using HTML, cascading style sheet, JavaScript, and we're going to see all those languages. Okay, plenty of examples. Any questions so far? Some of you, some of you might want to do a little bit more. Maybe you already know HTML and JavaScript. Maybe you already know PHP. Okay? I am also providing the opportunity for some of you to do a little bit more. And that is turn your website into an MVC pattern. And we're going to see later on what that means. It's going to be using a, f uh, a framework like Kate PHP and other and you, you might be able to do like RESTful services on your website. In other words, a, sur a, a website that you can see it on a phone, on an iPhone or on Android, okay? So I'm going to provide, and we'll play by ear, okay? 
If you guys want more, you can do more. Yes, Jonathan. That you cannot do? That's a good point. Um, you could do, I mean, I don't limit my students to whatever they want to use, okay? I provide the tools that I'm going to be using in front of you. I expect you to use those. If you have another tool that is much better, much you feel more, more comfortable with it, go ahead. But I'm warning you, there are tools out there that will allow you to do really cool web design and it will generate all the code for you. And guess what? When you start putting programming into these websites and you don't know how things are assembled behind the scenes, you're going to run into problems. And I'm talking about tools like... Um, what is that Adobe tool? that Dreamweaver. That it's click, drag, and drop. Boom. Click, drag, and drop. And you create this beautiful page and it generates all the code behind. You have to be able to take a look at that code and know exactly what it's doing. Because you're going to have to create, you're going to have to take those pages later on and add programming to it. Okay? Database driven programming. So if you don't know your way around whatever that tool generated, you're going to be in trouble. Good point. Any other questions? Uh, during the break, I'll help you guys if you have if you run into problems. Okay. What else? So, since you are going to create a website you're going to have to, and each one of you is going to create a different one. You're going to have to tell me what kind of theme project you want to work on. Okay? So think about something that you find fun or that have you you have seen some other somewhere in the internet that you have seen that it's really cool, it's a good idea, whatever. Okay? Keep in mind that these projects at the end of the semester, you're going to be able to upload them on the internet and you're going to be able to show them as part of your portfolio to potential employers when you're about to graduate. Okay? Parker Building has a lab, Computers has a lab, and we have a repository of all the projects that previous students that have graduated and almost ready to graduate have built in this class. And they can actually tell the potential employer, go to this URL and you will see the project that I built. Live. Okay? So, think about something fun that you really like or enjoy doing. Now, you're not going to do it on your own. You're going to need my help. I'm going to be narrowing the scope of what you need to build. I'm going to be trying to guide you what kind of functional requirements you're going to have to provide. And the way to do it is through the wiki. Moodle has a wiki. Okay? And this wiki, you guys, everybody pretty much is going to have to provide four different pages in this week. Well, if you count the, f the home page as the fifth, it will be fifth, five pages. But basically, it's going to be the problem statement, the functional requirements, images of the domain model of what you're building, and some UI sketches, some snapshots okay, of what you're going to be building. You will be building 
10 different functional requirements and I'm going to you and I are going to collaborate on what those 10 different functional requirements are going to be and it depends on your project obviously okay so for each one you will have one or more versions of what they look like snapshots yes yes good point there are other websites and I'm trying to remember I mean every semester some websites that were there are no longer there and new ones pop up but if I recall something about templates uh, HTML templates And some of them will be free, and some of them will will actually charge you. But yeah, that's the idea. I mean, you can actually download a template. Well, if once you have an idea of what you want to build, you're gonna go out there in the internet and hunt for the look and feel of what you know makes more sense for the type of project that you're building. And you will find that there is probably already a template done for that kind of project. Okay? So you can use it. If you want, you can use it. But you're going to have to customize it to your project. I mean, you're not going to find the exact same obviously you're not going to provide to me and I had students that provided this to me. Your company welcome and a whole bunch of latin. I'm like, are you serious? This is going this you are giving me a snapshot of what your website is going to look like. I don't want to see Latin. I don't want to see your company. I want to see, you know, your work with the look and feel that you decide to use. Okay? Yes, you, you're welcome to. And if you download this, this is going to be an HTML page, a cascading style sheet, and maybe not a JavaScript probably not even a JavaScript, just HTML and a cascading style sheet. And you can apply it to your project. Okay? Does that answer your question? Okay, so I was talking about the wiki. So in the wiki, you and I are going to be collaborating. So for next week, I need to know, I need to know what you guys are going to be building. So there's two, there's two parts to this homework for, tomorrow, for next week. First, a title. I want to see a two, three, four letter title. I'm sorry, word. <laughs> two, two, three, four word title. In my case, I'm going to be building with you guys Timex, an online timesheet system for a company. Okay? What does that mean? Well, that's the second part. I need you to create what we typically call a problem statement. In a problem statement, is one or two paragraphs max describing what you have right now if there is something that you have what the problem is if there is a problem with it and how your website is going to solve it what kind of services your website is going to offer okay
and there's one key reason why this is important because I want to be clear what you're building and I want you you to be clear what you're building and the only way that can happen is if you and I go over and over the problem statement many times and that's why we need the wiki because I'm going to be scratching stuff and I'm going to say no this is not right this should not be included I think this should be included and you and I are going to be collaborating through this wiki when we nail down the problem statement or at least 80 90 percent of it I'm going to need you to take all the nouns and highlight them because they are going to be the key players in your system okay and this is one of the many methodologies that, are, that there are out there but this one is very simple and it works. Yes. Say that again. Are you able to what? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, look, just select anybody. In fact, you're going to be able to see anybody's wiki. Just be careful, please. Don't mess anybody else's wiki. Everything that you do on Moodle will get logged. Okay? So you can see anybody's wiki. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you guys. This is my homepage. Okay? So when I come here and edit, and I want you to make sure that you create your homepage or all your pages, HTML pages. Okay? This is what my home page looks like. There is a title, and every page will have the same title. Okay? And then when you want to create a link to another page, this is what you do. You put it between double square brackets. So I have a problem statement, and you can call it whatever you want. I call them problem statement, functional requirements, domain model, and UI sketches. Okay? So each one of these will be another page. Got it? Wiki language. And then this is the content for my home page. You don't have to do this one right now, but eventually you're going to have to do it. History. This thing maintains a history of the collaboration between you and me. And I want you to warn you, or I'm warning you, about you create the page, I reply, get rid of this, add this, that, and the other, and then somewhere down the road you get rid of all my feedback okay because I can prove and this has happened before with some students that I say I need you to build one two three four five all the way to ten he didn't like my eight he or she didn't like my eight so just got rid of the eight and replace it with a different number two no no okay you're going to be great at implementing 10 different functional requirements. And that's why it's so important that you and I go through those. What else? Any questions? So if you go to problem statement, for instance, see that? And you edit. This is what the problem statement page looks like. Behind the scenes, yes, there is HTML. This is the HTML equivalent. So you guys can create it in HTML or use this nice wizard that allows you to do bold and all that. 
all that stuff. Okay? So far, so good. You still don't see mine? Do you see this list of names? You don't see this list of names. Oh, okay. That's a good point. Sorry, I should have... Go to the homepage for CSIS 3020, right? Do you see this wiki with website project specification? Click on it. Yes. Good point. The first time that you come in, you have to create your home page. So call it whatever you want, home, home page, you know, main page, whatever. And it will create this page for you. Blank, obviously. <laughs> All right. And then just add the title and the four pages that you're going to be working on. And save it. The first time that you render this page, these will show up in red, meaning they have not been created. The first time that you click on them, they will get created. Got it? So the first time that I created UI sketches, it was in red. It wasn't created. So I clicked on it, and a, bl a blank page came up. And I added this content. Now, how do you create images? Now we know how to create the letters and stuff. You know, you know that it's HTML. You can paste it as HTML or whatnot. Look at this. Each one of these is a page. So even my screenshot, each individual screenshot is a page. Or I should say UI sketch is a page. Right? So let's go into the login one. The login page. And let's edit it. Okay. In here, as you can see, I have a table. And you can create tables. Uh, somewhere in here, you can create a table. Table. No, that's paste. Where is it? There it is. Insert and add in a table, right? It will actually put, you know, two, how many columns you want, how many rows, etc., all that stuff. Behind the scenes is actually just putting HTML. So this is the equivalent. Okay? And you can add pictures. You can add pictures to it. So when you put, you place yourself into cell one of this, cell one, column one of this table, you will be able to insert an image. Now, this image that I pasted in here, or these two images that I pasted in here, could be PNGs, JPEGs, whatever you want, of the real thing in the browser. Okay? So at one point in time, once you have, okay, I want to create a project about this theme, you went out there hunting for a look and feel, you finally found it, you are customizing your home page with your logo, your menu, your title, everything, you have it nice and ready, what do you do? You take a screenshot of it, save it as a JPEG or a PNG, and post it on the wiki. This, at one point in time, was a real page. This was the first version of that real page. Ugly, simple, 
this is the enhanced version of that same login page. Got it? Yes. Yeah, this was the first version. So you can see, simple and ugly. This is the enhanced version. So this one is something that I did very quick using HTML tags. You just put the HTML tags, no cascading style sheet, no nothing. Okay? And then I went out there looking for a template. And I found a really cool template. The thing was called... Uh, I have the name somewhere in there. That had the clock. You know, that had, uh, you know, sort of the, the same colors and and I, I say I like this one. You know, it's it's for a timesheet system, so the clock is important, the menus, the look and feel of the menus. I say I like this one. So what I did is I applied, I applied the cascading style sheet and the HTML to this simple, ugly page and this is what it became of it okay and I'm going to show you guys how to do that I don't expect you to know that obviously okay in fact the US sketches is uh, almost the last page that you were going to be narrowing down so for now the most important one is problem statement the problem statement. So send me an IM. Hey, how about this? You give me the title. Okay. Sounds good. Now I need to know the one or two paragraphs of what you're going to be doing. Okay. I will say yes, no, has been taken. Remember, first come, first serve basis. Or... Mm. modify this, add that, delete that, think about it. Okay? But by next week, you guys got to know what you're going to be building. Any questions? Some of you might not be able to make it, and this goes also for the online students that I know are not going to make it, but still want to be able to attend to the class live. So what I'm going to do is I am going every session before we start, I'm going to, why do you keep saying that? Yeah, I know. It's untrusted. Oh, because I downloaded the other day. Okay. I'm going to be providing, before we start recording the class, I'm going to be providing through Moodle IM for everybody online or classroom students that are not present to join me, from which you can actually join the classroom. Okay? So, all you're going to need is a browser and I think the first time it will ask you from it will ask you for downloading some kind of client side security and security are you guys able to get and join me? I 
might be having an issue with with my Firefox. Okay, that's another good point. It is well known for the last 15 or 20 years that a website will work fine with a certain browser and it will not work that good with another browser. I'm going to be using Firefox as the web browser for grading your website. Okay? So keep that in mind. Especially when you select, and you guys will be selecting, some kind of JavaScript library that works very well with certain browsers, but not with others. No, you can use whatever you want. Oh, okay. It will tell you when you before you download it from the website that you want to download it from. It will tell you. It will run on Firefox 20, whatever, but not on Firefox 12. Did the certificate expire on these guys? probably had an old certificate see the steps that I'm taking right now is the step if you haven't done it already before it's the same steps that you will have to be have a problem, right? I don't think... Hmm. Did, and it got the same error, which is what it's really weird. Untrusted. <laughs> See that? It says that it's it's not trusted. back in January 30th. How did that happen? Not good, right? We are in... August 30th. 
Wow. You see that? The, even the